Hello everybody, welcome back to an another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. And yes, it's that time of the year again. This year I decided to make the Fallout look a little bit earlier because last year when I was making it, it was July 16th. That's when it was uploaded. And it was, I mean, you know, relatively, it was pretty uh, close fall. If you think about it, we only had one month and then meteorologically fall would be here. So right now, July 6th, we have around two months before fall. So it's starting, let's, you know, let's try to make these forecasts now. So again, US 2019 fall forecast breakdown part one. So uh, let's get into this. Before uh, we get into uh, any further of this video, I would like you to consider subscribing to this channel. It helps me immensely uh especially in these outlooks it lets me know if uh you want to see more of these outlooks if you want to see more of these type of videos so definitely i would strongly advise uh subscribing and letting me know uh, what's going on and uh, you could also like the video there's also a link in the description box below there's it's for a patreon basically you donate two or three dollars a month if you are willing to to support this channel um, as of right now the funds are pretty low so uh, let's continue let's continue into the actual forecast so the things we will be going over is the ENSO outlook or the ENSO outlook on uh, NOAA's outlook seasonal outlook what they have to say um, and we will be also looking at some analogs so right now we are looking at the ENSO ENSO and you could see that uh, this is just the previous ones. You could see last fall uh, there was a lot of there was a whole area where we did not know what was gonna happen. Um, you could see. I mean, I remember making videos in August, September, and it was still a Lani or an or about it's it was supposed to be an El Nino already in Ju June, but it never occurred. So you could see it only occurred in October, but it was still very weak, and that's what I forecasted. However. Um, there was a little bit, uh, you know, altering effects for that. It wasn't 100% what I thought. But this year, it looks, if we look at the models, it looks as if the Enzo outlook is, uh, the El Nino is favored <clears throat> to stay throughout much of the rest of summer. And throughout the fall, it's, you know, nearing 50%. So that's a 50-50, uh, basically. A 50% chance it's going to be an El Nino. And a 50% chance it's going to be a neutral. A La Nina at this point does not seem likely. However, I want to put emphasis on that because this could still definitely change. They update, update this the second Thursday of the month, each month. And that will be in a week, less than a week's time, since it is Saturday. Next Thursday, they will be uh, updating this, and I will upload a new video then, um, updating on the ENSO outlook. And you can see that, I mean, uh, the the El Nino forecast probability, it's low, but it's there. So, you know, I'll show you the models right now, what they're showing. You can see a majority of models predict the weak El Nino to continue into the northern hemisphere uh winter 2019 2020 so that obviously would encompass the time frame of fall however if you were to look at this you could see the dyn average the statistical average the cpc climate prediction center council um those are like the bright colors they are very borderline you can see they're just hovering over and obviously models are not set in stone models change as well so these could you know these could go way up and it could be a moderate to strong el nino i doubt it or it could be a uh, a weaker to almost a neutral uh, pattern which i think is more likely and you could see that they're close because anything that is 0 0.5 degrees and below up to zero negative 0 0.5 degrees is considered a neutral and you can see some models are definitely putting themselves in it but the averages as of now are still running on a border so why am i showing you this so you know what what will i what if a weak el nino stays um even if a moderate el nino stays which i doubt it but let's just say it does a weak to moderate el nino this is what the typical impacts are you could see um it's it's a little bit different from an El Nino. In the typical El Nino, you would see this northern branch of the jet stream stay further to the north and not dip down to the south. With the weak to moderate El Nino, some of this cold air is able to penetrate into the northern tier of the United States, meaning the Great Lakes and Northeast, the Upper Plains, and uh, the southern jet stream is riding a little bit further to the north as well, bringing these two storms 
uh, bringing, I mean, bringing these two jet streams together, they get, they get brought together on the northeast coast, and that leads to quite a bit of storminess. And obviously, if there's cold that aligns with the storminess, you know, that could produce some snowstorms. Is that guaranteed? No, because last year, give me, let me give you an example. It was a weak El Nino last, this past winter, but do you remember any snow in the northeast? No, there was literally no snow in the northeast. I mean, if there, it was very weak snow. Uh, below average so you know that's but that it typically is like this however you know it's not like that every time and it's wetter across california as well and it's mild across the northwest and north and uh notice also notice how it says typical impacts on winter uh, i should have said this earlier but uh, usually when uh when we talk about winter it's from early november into late march Early November is still considered fall, so that's why I decided to put uh, this on here, uh, you know, because it's still impacting the latter part of fall. In terms of the ENSO neutral winter pattern, if it were to be a neutral uh, fall winter, you know, whatever you want to call it as, but it's going to be in impacting November nevertheless, and November is still a fall month meteorologically and astronomically, and you can see that it's more cold, and more, and the wet and warmness stays to the uh, stays to the to the more to the south, but they could still produce giant storms off the east coast. Just the cold, the defining characteristics uh, characteristic is that the warm is a little bit to the south, and the cold is further to the south as well. So if we uh, if you go uh, sorry if you go forward into the next slide, uh, you wanting you know you're wanting to know what the, the 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 equal chances or what are the chances for a a, a fall, but I'm getting lost here. What are the chances for, you know, below or above average temperatures early on in the falls for September and October? I just showed you November, which seems to be, you know, more on the chillier side. September, October, this is NOAA. Um, you probably all know what NOAA is. It's definitely not a 100%, uh, uh, you know, always hits the ha hammer, uh, hits the nail with the hammer. It's usually a little bit off, and I think they're pretty far off here. I don't think there will be above average conditions for uh, September, October, and November averaged out. I think it will be fairly chilly across the north and the northeast. Um, maybe the southwest, what they're showing here, is going to be a little bit warmer. Um, the southeast, again, I, I really doubt it's going to be that warm, much warmer. I think it's going to be most cool across the north central United States. But this is what NOAA is, and I decided to include it in here since I've included it in the years past. Including, uh, now talking about, I meant to say, uh, about NOAA's precip outlook, you could see, um, I'm not going to be doing a precipitation outlook uh, on this forecast. If you want me to do one on the next forecast, I will do so. But uh, precip is way more harder to nail. I mean, way more harder. So uh, I feel like, and it doesn't make too much of a difference as much as temperatures, it seems. I mean, if you're going to, you know, I can't, you know, you may, your argument may be, oh, well, there's flooding. That makes a huge impact. Well, I can't pinpoint flooding. I'm sorry. There could be a couple of thunderstorms that could occur, and the day before, I wouldn't even be able to predict them. No one would be because they're so sporadic in nature. So uh, precip is almost impossible to predict. Uh, you could, you know, general patterns, yes, but I don't think it's as important as temperatures and when it, when it comes to a general precip to pattern. And you can see more wet across the southeast or the south and the southwest, and then equal chances, meaning it could be above or below uh, average across the rest of the country in the white. So now uh, I want to go into the analog portion. This is the fun part of the forecast. Um, this is where, uh, this is from a previous video I recorded. It was titled, I think, Why the Summer's Pattern Could Indicate a Cold Winter. And basically, I took summers that were either chilly or had the very similar char characteristics as this summer. Uh, warm in the west, warm in the south, uh, southeast, and cooler up north. I took those summers and averaged out their falls. So I, you know, I took the summer of, say, 1997, and I... I'm like, okay, let's see what the far, fall was from September to November of 1997. And I added a bunch of other years, and with these years, you could see this is what averaged out to a very chilly fall. Uh, as you could see, that we could be expecting a chillier fall based on the summer we just had. Based on the summer's weather, the analogs, historical data is telling us that this is what fall could be looking like. Granted, uh, you could see that there are many years on this, and those, you know, all those years combined usually mean that the increments that the uh, 
anomalies or the contrast go up by as much. I mean, you can see it's 0.4 of a degree Celsius in difference. That may not seem like a lot. You may be like, that's almost negligible. But if there is a, that big of a difference across such a large span of years, then it's uh, highlighted in those dark colors for a reason to show that this is as significant as, you know, it would be negative 4 or negative 8 on a different scale. So that's something to point out. And now I'll just show you month to month how this looked like. You could see November. This is what it looked like of that September to November time frame. Uh, it was the coldest you could see, especially across the northwest and uh, north central plains. And then you could see uh, the October was the warmest. It seemed uh, not, you know, nothing too uh, alarming just a little bit cooler in the west a little bit cooler on the great lakes and we see that big air mass that was gonna come in november getting stored up in october uh we, we you know we could see it on this analog and also for uh i meant to for september that's what i wanted uh, you could see just chillier across the east and warmer across the west okay guys so now for the final uh not the final but the uh, preliminary first fall forecast of 2019 Let's get right here into it. So I know this picture is uh, pretty vague, but uh, it's 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 far out. Still, I know I'll get comments complaining that it's still far out. So my argument back to those people is that's why my forecast is so vague because it's far out. And uh, you could see that I did put a cold uh, air mass over into the northern central portions and northeast of the America. And I put a warmer air mass over the southwest. And you could see that this is still bound to change. This, I wouldn't even be able to pinpoint it, you know, if even if I could have all the meteorological tools in the world, it still would be just, you know, really hard to predict. I would just literally have to know. And you could see, I think it will be pretty chilly uh, across the north central U.S. and the northeast due to the neutral pattern that I think will take hold. And uh, the southwest will get impacted by that subtropical jet bringing in that warm moist air. It will be warm, but I think it will be pretty hot as well. I mean, it will be wet, but I think it will be pretty hot as well. And here I think it will be very cold, very chilly. Um, in terms of snowfall, I'm not sure, but I think it will be, um, you know, fairly chilly for the uh, for the fall. And, you know, I said snowfall in the fall. Yeah, it may seem a little bit counterintuitive snow in the fall, but that does happen, uh, especially around that November time frame. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. I really would appreciate it. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.